abortion battles are back on Capitol Hill. First, in the House, you've got Democrats. Uh, you've got Democrats who are speaking out of a Republican bill that would limit coverage of abortion under the new health care system. That's the new taxpayer funding of abortion bill. Then across the street at the Supreme Court, as you just heard, you've got justices hearing arguments over the so-called buffer zone law that keeps protesters from coming within 35 feet of abortion clinics. Representative Diana DeGette is a Democrat from Colorado who is also the chief deputy whip. Uh, Congressman, let me, let, let's start with that. I want to get to that Supreme Court case in just a moment. Uh, but, but let's start with the, the so-called no taxpayer funding of abortion bill. Uh, it got a hearing this morning. It's being pushed by Republicans on the House Judiciary Committee, all of 23 of whom are men starting with Chairman Bob Goodlatte of Virginia. Now, how much of a problem are, are just the optics alone here? But, but Craig, the, 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 you said it best, the so-called no taxpayer funding of abortion bill, because, of course, right now, under, call, under U.S. law, we don't allow taxpayer funding of abortion. And, and really, the optics are a problem. We have this all-male panel saying what we've defeated over and over again, which is they're saying now women can't use their own money to buy health insurance that covers a full range of women's reproductive services. That's a problem. And the women of America are saying, why should we not get all of the health care we need with our own money? And, and once again, here you are, the first bill that the Judiciary Committee is considering is a bill that takes away these health care rights of women. Let's switch to this Massachusetts law being argued before the Supreme Court today. We just heard from our justice correspondent. It is very much like a law that you wrote back in 1993 right. while a state legislator in Colorado, the so-called bubble law that tried to, to shield women from protesters outside abortion clinics there in Colorado. Based on, on what we've seen and what we've heard from this court, and also based on your own legal experience, I know that you're, you're an attorney as well. What's the likely outcome for states like Colorado and Massachusetts here? Well, yeah, uh, Craig, you're right. I, I wrote the first bubble law, and it went all the way up to the Supreme Court, where in 2000, the U.S. Supreme Court decided that it was a balance between the free speech of the protesters, but also the rights of the patients to get into these health care clinics. And they upheld these kinds of laws because we see that, that what the protesters do, they get in people's faces, they spit on them, they try to block them from going on. And so the Supreme Court said that that was a reasonable law uh, to have an eight-foot barrier around protesters and patients getting into clinics. Today, of course, the Supreme Court's considering a Massachusetts law which says it's a 35-foot barrier, and I, I think the court will have to decide is that reasonable or not. But, but I will tell you, as someone who's been working on these issues for more than 20 years, the Supreme Court has upheld the concept that patients do have the right to get access into health care clinics and that while protesters have a right to protest it's not an unrestricted right and that and that medical patients really do have that ability and as several of the justices said today you know a lot of these patients going into facilities yeah. not just patients going to get abortions but people going for breast cancer sure. or cervical cancer treatment they are in a fragile state and they need to be allowed to get into those clinics the protesters don't differentiate between people going to get abortions and people going to get wellness visits or cancer treatment. Congresswoman Diana DeGette from Colorado. Congresswoman, thank you. Thanks. Great being with you.